can you hear me? I'm trying to get this thing set up. I can get the chat going. Ah, oh, God, I just turned it on. Ah, right, there we go. Hello, Redneck. I'm mowing a little custom hay today. Loud and clear, good deal. We're, uh, Dad's fluffing some hay. We're actually gonna, uh, was gonna square bell today, but it, the moisture is still high on it. It was in the 20s. So we're gonna wind up square bell some tomorrow. Um, that I cut earlier in the week, and I think I made a video of it, pretty sure. I, I got so much going on, I can't even remember what I made a video of, what I haven't made a video of. It's extremely stressful right now, but uh, this has got a lot of crabgrass in it. It's a little bit older. Uh, we're bailing this for a guy we do a lot of custom work for. This is for his cows. Um, it's still a really good cow pay for as far as quality. Um, I've got the, you can't see it, but well, here. I got the 2650 disco on and I'm mowing with a 5400. Let me put y'all back up here. I'm mowing with a 5400. Um, the reason why I'm not using the McCormick is because it's hooked to the square baler and we're going to be using it tomorrow so I didn't feel like having nothing to do with it. Um, and hooking it up to this mower and undoing it and everything else. Dad's using the 4710 uh, to fluff with because we got the 383 hooked up to the rake too and I feel like I'm doing it. That's where they're at. Papa, he's taking it easy. He's in his rocking chair on a Saturday. <laughs> but me and Dad's both working. Hoping to go to the dirt race later tonight. If I make it, I might try to get a little bit of footage of that. They're supposed to have a derby thing there. But the hurricane, they are talking like it's supposed to come down or kind of skirt the side of Georgia and South Carolina from what I've seen so far. But all our weather forecasts that I've seen it are basically showing no rain, which is, I don't understand that. I guess they're thinking maybe it's gonna stay more uh, west of us. It won't come over this way, so I'm kind of on the fence. They're saying zero to ten percent nearly every day where we're at, and I need to be cutting more hay. But <laughs> with a hurricane, for a hurricane, I don't know if I really want to do that. <laughs> Let's see. uses cellular data on my phone to do this. I don't know why. It, I guess it's coming over good. That's a good thing. But we're just getting your mode. I, but like I said, I've got a bunch more that I need to be cutting. But I'm, kind, I'm probably going to wait until Monday and then if they're still saying no rain, I'm just going to put it on the ground and say the heck with it. Because um, I've got a lot of ground to cover uh, and with this Bermuda we've only got a certain time period uh, between now and the, probably the second week of September before the cooler air starts coming in and it's really going to, even if it's not uh, really where it should be as far as cutting it wise it's going to start turning brown and I'm going to lose it all together and I don't want to do that so I'm pushing hard trying to get as much done as we can but who knows? This does have a little bit of Johnson grass in it, but minimal. Uh, it's definitely not the force that we're used to <laughs> do whenever I get into it. Somebody commented yesterday on, on one of the older videos I had and said that they sowed it in their fields. Well, I got plenty of seed if you want some. <laughs> I don't want any more. 
I'm trying to get rid of it. Lord, this stuff's a nuisance. There's some foxtail right here in this uh, little bottom area that's in this field. Yeah, they can't make up their minds at all. I mean, one minute they're they're saying rain, next minute they ain't. Now we got a Cat 4 hurricane that's supposed to hit Georgia, and now they're saying no rain at all. So that ought to tell you how screwy the weather system is around here. But I'm I'm quite a bit north. And they're saying it's mostly going to hit down in South Georgia, which I'm really feeling feeling for all the cotton farmers and everything that's down there. Uh, in the far south and uh, whatnot. Those guys got hit pretty hard last year. And then now they're gonna take probably another whooping again this year. I, I don't know, it's, was it last year when that hurricane come through? I can't remember, it may, I'm pretty sure it was last year that they got hit pretty hard. The pecan trees got whooped on. But I'm about 45 minutes, min, oh, yeah. 45 minutes directly north of Atlanta, so I'm, I'm not uh, in the direct path uh, of the thing, but the only bad thing about here is, is a lot of our trees, when you get the kind of winds that come in a storm like that, they're not, they're not real hardy compared to a lot of places are, I guess you could say that's where the trees have been there for years and experienced hurricanes and they'll blow over a lot easier up here and that's typically what happens that and none of the buildings are built to where they're going to stand that kind of wind because we're not on the coast but i don't know the last one that come through it blew blew the roof off of my neighbor's barn and then uh, we had a little bit of damage our livestock barn uh our cattle off more part of the roof on it come off last and so it, not looking forward to it oh good so now they're saying it's gonna go out to sea well that's good y'all hit those thumbs up so that way we get uh, more people watching this thing if you would please I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, I hope that thing does turn and go back out. I mean, a Cat 4 hitting is no good wherever it hits. We've had enough of that for a while here on, uh, on the eastern coast, from South Carolina, the Georgia coast to Florida. I had to go down to the airport um, below Atlanta yesterday uh, and there was a, a bunch of power trucks and everything was going down. I seen guys from, uh, I, think, I think there was some from Oklahoma and just all over. Uh, as I was driving down, I see them. They was heading down there. I feel sorry for those guys. Man, that, that is no fun trying to fix all that mess after one of those things come through. It creates a huge mess. But we've been doing good on our hay this year. I, I haven't really talked a whole lot about how the how the season's been going as far as um, selling it and everything. We've probably had about as good a year as we've had in a long time um, so far. If I can finish the year out like it's been going, it's probably going to be one of our best hay seasons uh, to date um, as far as uh, selling hay to to uh, people not just producing our own uh, we've had a very good year so far uh, got some big deals uh, worked out I'm selling a lot more than I was last year the 40 the 1840 in line that we bought is just I mean it's changed the game for us I mean we went from bailing 500 to 1,000 squares in a day um, was a decent day now we did sometimes we did more than that but most of the time that was kind of where we were at now if we're doing a thousand that's kind of 
average. It's not even a big day or a decent day. It's more or less kind of on the lower scale. So, I mean, it's really, really helped us um, as far as just getting hay through. This, the speed and capacity that that baler has is, is second to none. There is one thing I have found about it. Um, the, the augers on it, for when it gets in real, real heavy hay, they will tend to start to wrap towards the end as it starts to, uh, if you get like a big wad that comes in and it will turn under the auger or kind of go around the auger and then it will flip the little uh, bands up towards the ends um, or it did when we first got it and then they make contact with the augers and scrape a little bit. But I don't know, I've got to talk to the reps when I go to the show about that but it kind of seemed like the bands were sticking up a little higher than they needed to be. So I just took a hammer and knocked each one down some, and that solved that issue. But we've had a pretty good year. Rolls, we've done a, a lot of rolls. Um, we got a lot left to do. We are going to have probably the most third cutting I've done in several years, too, to do this year. It's, this year kind of reminds me of 2014. Uh, 2014, we had a really good year then, too. Um, and then from there, it kind of went down. Hello, how you doing? Y'all got any questions, put them in the, comp, uh, the thing, and I'll try to read them and answer them the best I can. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to see it, but... Georgia plays tonight. I'm looking forward to that. Get to see them play Vanderbilt. I seen Alabama yesterday too when I was going through town. I, uh, I passed the the Crimson Tide buses. They was coming through Atlanta going to their game that they was playing. I think they had uh, four or five charter buses, and then they had uh, I think it was a van trailer with the Crimson Tide band equipment and stuff in it. Roll Tide! <laughs> Go dogs! I can't, if I ain't pulling for the dogs, I generally pull, pull for Alabama because they're right next to us. My sister went to Clemson so she, so she absolutely cannot stand it. <laughs> but I don't care. I've always been a Georgia Bulldogs fan, but I do pull for Alabama if they don't because I just like to see Clemson lose because my sister went there. <laughs> Not that I have anything against uh, Clemson. Uh, what does that say? Ah, I can't read that. What did that say? Dang it. Ah, right, here we go. Georgia's playing tennis. Georgia, what did I say? Georgia State's playing Tennessee. I wish Georgia State would win, but more likely Tennessee's going to. Uh, this is second cutting on this. Normally, all we get in is two cuttings. Uh, that's about all I get to. Time is said and done. But I will be doing, and we'll do a few third cuttings. Generally, I do the third cuttings on my square bell fields. Because that's what I first generally start with at the beginning, or my better fields. And then I'll cut them about again, normally kind of in August. And then I'll hit them again in late September. I've got a lot of questions, too, on what preservative do I use. I use... Uh, I think it's Harvest Tech makes it for them, but I actually use the Agco brand because that's what Kane sells up there at the dealership, so that's what I get off of him. I just buy whatever he got. Um, and they're, they're running the Agco uh, preservative, which I believe, if I'm mistaken, that they use Harvest Tech as their supplier, but I can't remember. Um, 
Um, somebody, I'm always getting questions too on these headlines and the different things you can do. And I got thinking about it last night. There, a lot of people get afraid of the older inlines or just in general, the square bailers, but really, with the, the inline Hestons, there's not a lot to them and you can rebuild them pretty easily. Um, main thing is, as long as there's nothing wrong with the, the gearboxes, the, uh, the chamber on the inside, it hasn't had any damage or the plunger hasn't had any bends in it or anything. Other than that, I mean, just the overall main components of the pickup, you can pretty well rebuild them pretty cheap as far as like the rollers and the, the knotters and different pieces and stuff. They're, and you can have pretty well just a, nearly as good as new as new Baylor when you get done. They're not as complicated as some of the Scar Baylors. seen a lot of people who are at the Farm Progress show. It looked like they had a pretty good show this year at it. A lot of, a lot of equipment being rolled out. I'm looking forward to the Sunbelt Ag Expo. It kind of leans more towards what I do than the uh, as much row crop stuff because I mean they had the show late in the fall so most anybody that's in row crop generally unless they're local or in the field harvesting and not going to it. So they they have a lot of row crop stuff down there, but mostly what I they have the main thing is hay stuff. Which I, I think that there's gonna be other YouTubers there this year besides me, which I'm kinda of looking forward to. But last year I there was wasn't many people down there that was on YouTube. I kinda of, one of the few that's even in the south anymore. Everybody that's on YouTube either from the Midwest or up north. About all I feel like a long wolf. There's a few others though. But I just thought I'd make a live stream today, let y'all watch me. Have a schedule for the expo yet. Um no I do not. I haven't got uh, to get anybody to send me a the time sheet for all the demonstrations yet. I, at first, I was going to try to do the meet and greet first thing in the morning, but then I thought about it. Well, everybody might not be able to get there that early if they're because they're traveling or something. So, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is sometime around two o'clock, uh, meet up with everybody in the, the Agco booth. Just because, like I said in that one video, they've got the most newer equipment that we have on the farm that I can actually show y'all that's there. Um, but I'll be wandering around. Uh, maybe if I do it again, I'll try to do it at Klaus booth or something. Or if I do two in a day or if I uh, another year I come back, I don't know. But I am looking forward to, I want to talk to the Coon guy, the Coons MFG guys while I'm down there. Uh, maybe go see the Vermeer guys. Talk to them. I want to take another look at these Dutch tractors. And I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to have the larger Klaus tractors there because I kind of want to look at them uh, This may be an option in the future for us. I love Mesa first, but I kind of like some diversity too. Just something different to look at anyway. <laughs> but, alrighty, thank y'all for checking or tuning in with us. I'm going to cut her off. I got to get up there on the terraces. It gets really rough. Right up there. And uh, I don't want to be trying to live stream and up there. Oh, God. There's a lot of ditches in this dang field. I don't know what I'd do if I had some of that some good, smooth hay fields. It would be nice. But, thank y'all for watching. 
and uh, I'll see y'all next time. I might have a video out tomorrow, but if not, it'll be Monday. Uh, just depending on how hectic everything uh, goes um, tomorrow and if I have actual time to edit it and whatnot. So I'll see y'all next time.